Food City. It was Food City at that time. Uh, the morning after. Mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Got some stuff to cook for breakfast and one of the Elvis impersonators. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Glover. And I'm Cindy Sexton. A dog left abandoned on the side of the road has died. The seriously ill pit bull was found on Hooker Road in Chattanooga earlier this week. Investigators with McKamey Animal Services are looking into the death. Channel 3's Kate Smith has more. Animal control officers with the McKamey Animal Center are looking for leads in this very disturbing animal cruelty case. They are hoping a $1,000 reward will catch those responsible. They loaded the dog up in his doghouse and dumped them both on the side of the road. Executive Director Jamie McAloon says what officers found was unsettling. This animal suffered, suffered a lot and it was all preventable. Someone traveling on Hooker Road observed something laying inside a plastic doghouse. They pulled over to investigate and found the pit bull emaciated and unable to move. He couldn't walk, he couldn't stand, um, he was in really poor shape, so the officer immediately removed the dog and brought him back to the shelter. The dog was transported to McAmey and began to receive emergency care. The dog was in such poor shape that it, he did not make it but he'd been in such bad shape for a long time, so his suffering had been ongoing for quite a while. The dog, a male pit bull, was about four years old. It was white and brindle, wearing a unique red collar made of braided rope. We're hoping that somebody's going to know something, and they will, because this dog was very distinctive, so somebody knows this dog. McAloon says there are plenty of resources available in Chattanooga, and abandoning animals is not the answer. She's hoping a full investigation will bring justice for this dog. I just can't understand what couldn't be a felony in this case because of the, the, the lack of attention to this dog's illness that resulted in, in weeks, if not months, of ongoing suffering. That was Kate Smith reporting. A little more than a year ago, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation launched the nation's first online animal abuse registry. Only eight people have been added to that registry. Two of them are from our viewing area. In order to be put on the list, the person has to be convicted of a felony, which animal abuse felony convictions are rare, and they take time. Animal shelters like McAmey Animal Center say the registry is a useful tool to make sure a rescued pet will not be adopted back into an abusive home. There's a link to the registry at WRCBTV.com. Looks like we're going to have nice weather for Mother's Day weekend. Uh, for the confirmation, we head over to the Storm Alert Center. Paul Mayer standing by. Hey, Paul. Well, we do have a few showers for tonight, and uh, we're going to see a few more showers, but they're very, very light now. As we put this into motion, you'll be able to see, well, those showers disappeared. But there was, there was plenty of showers around, but they're very, very light. Now, this is Vipercast, again, showing some light rain showers about 7 o'clock into the Blue Ridge Mountains, but most of them are going to be moving out of our area very, very quickly. And then we're going to see clearing for tomorrow afternoon through Sunday. Looks like sunny skies right into Sunday night, right into Monday. And uh, Monday morning, this stops at around 8 o'clock and just some great weather with a lot of sunshine coming up for the next few days. Now, again, we're going to start off with clouds for tomorrow. But again, those sprinkles will be ending for tonight. Nothing really heavy. The heaviest stuff has already gone by. We'll show you our exclusive Skywatcher uh, report and some of the heavy rains just north and east of the city. It's all coming up on my seven-day forecast. 
Paul, thank you. New tonight, Walker County Sheriff Steve Wilson says a Chattanooga Valley student took an unloaded gun to school today. Sheriff Wilson says the 14 year old boy was charged with possession of a firearm. A juvenile judge released the boy to his parents. We're learning more about a former teacher accused of kidnapping a 15 year old student. Tad Cummins will stay in jail until his trial. He appeared in federal court in Nashville this afternoon. The 50 year old is accused of crossing state lines to have sex with a teenage girl. And today in court, he admitted to just that. He claims it happened most nights while they were on the run. They were gone for 37 days before they were captured in California. State investigators arrived in Trenton today to start their investigation into yesterday's triple bus crash in Dade County. Trenton police tell Channel 3 the driver of the last bus involved in the crash was cited for following too closely. Seven students and two drivers needed treatment after the crash on Highway 11 in Trenton. The bus is sat in the transportation yard out of service today while spare buses and drivers resumed routes. Buses can be replaced, windshields can be repaired, but um, our students, um, they are our, <laughs> just our precious angels. No one was seriously hurt in the crash yesterday. Police are investigating a shooting involving a sheriff's deputy in Whitfield County. This happened just before 2 o'clock this morning in Dalton. Police responded to a home to check out a man who was reportedly acting paranoid, they say. He apparently had a machete and a hammer. The man's wife told the officers her husband was bipolar and was off his medication. After the man refused to drop the object, he was, quote, aggressively waving. They fired a gunshot. He was hit in the shoulder and is expected to be okay. The GBI is helping out with the investigation there. An arrest was made today in connection to the shooting outside Hamilton Place near Bar Louie in March. 30-year-old Benjamin Thomas Conley III faces attempted murder and other charges. He was found in Catoosa County as being held there until he can be brought to Hamilton County. The victim, 34-year-old Gunnery Sergeant Robert Driver Jr. Friends say Driver was leaving the mall when he was shot. Conley was said to have had words with Driver and then fired shots at him as he left. Governor Bill Haslam has signed an abortion bill into law. The law states a woman can get an abortion after 20 weeks if a doctor determines the fetus is viable through required tests. Tennessee becomes one of at least 21 states that explicitly bans abortions beyond viability, but the measure called the Tennessee Infants Protection Act goes further than most other bans and could become the subject of a lengthy court challenge. Well, two Chattanoogans appeared in tonight's episode of First Dates. For four years, Chad White and Bethany Holtzclaw lived within half an hour's drive of each other, but they never met until they flew to Chicago for a television show. The two were picked to be contestants on the new show, First Dates. White graduated from UTC, is now a news producer for the NBC affiliate in Atlanta. Holtzclaw is from Cleveland, Tennessee, and a nurse practitioner in Chattanooga. Oddly enough, the two were paired together there are two other contestants with local ties on the show. The next to appear is Ben Francis. He will be featured on May the 26th. After the break on Eyewitness News at 11, a Kentucky couple started their Mother's Day weekend off on a good note by going into labor. But it's the number of babies that will surprise you. Plus, it's a plane, it's a bird, it's a horse. This horse was flown to safety. We'll tell you more about this coming up.
A really special Mother's Day awaits new parents in Kentucky. First time parents Brianna and Jordan Driscoll are starting off their journey as mom and dad in a very big way. Tuesday, the new parents welcomed their bundle of joy five times over. Three girls, Dakota Faith, Zoe Hart, Holland Grace, and two boys, Gavin Lane and Asher Blaze. Honestly, it's a miracle. I honestly have no idea how all of that fit inside of me. I look at them laying there every day and I'm just in awe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the babies are expected to stay at Kentucky Children's Hospital until their original due date, which is in July. Rescue crews in Southern California hoisted a horse to safety. It's believed the horse and its rider fell some 300 feet down a steep hillside. LA County Fire and Rescue assisted in the recovery of the horse. You see there, they put a harness on that animal and he took a little ride via helicopter. It may look like a flying horse, probably <laughs> just a grateful one. The rider was taken to the hospital. The horse appears to be in good condition. He has an outstanding story to tell yeah. as he walked toward a trailer under his own power. Wow. There you go. <laughs> A funnel cloud was spotted in Baton Rouge today and it was caught on video. Tornado warnings were issued and now the National Weather Service is confirming a tornado touched down there. There were reports of tree limbs down, some structural damage and power outages in the area. A severe thunderstorm watch is now in effect for nearly a dozen parishes southeast of Baton Rouge. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 11, a local family says a funeral home disrespected their loved one. In a picture posted online, a veteran is seen lying on a gurney partially covered by an American flag for visitation. We have reaction from the veteran's family straight ahead. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. A picture of a deceased local veteran has gone viral, but it's not about the sacrifices he made for his country. The stir on social media comes after family members became upset with the way the funeral home cared for their loved one. Tanisha Cordell spoke with the family and has more. And, and you know, we work paycheck to paycheck. I mean, it, and that's how we do it, but I mean, it's just, it's hard to deal with somebody telling you that your own father can't be put in the ground because of it. It was an emotional roller coaster for the Taylor family days before their loved one was laid to rest. On Thursday, the family arrived at Heritage Funeral Home in Fort Oglethorpe for a private viewing. James Leon Taylor says what they saw was heartbreaking. 
Most of my family walked out yesterday because they did not want to see him in that position. James took this picture of his father, George Luther Taylor, draped in an American flag lying on a gurney. The picture shows the U.S. Army veteran wearing an American flag T-shirt with nothing underneath but a white towel placed under his head. James says the funeral home wouldn't put his father in a casket after problems with their insurance. They did say that until the $9,000 that they was charging for a casket and everything, it would not, it had to be paid before we could put him into the ground at the National Cemetery. The funeral home's managing director did not want to talk on camera, but told Channel 3 the funeral home followed all guidelines and policies and did what they were asked to do. We asked him to be shown, but I didn't realize they was going to bring him out like a table like it. I was hoping that they would cover it up a little bit more, and I told the guy inside that, you know, I would have to I'd deal with it, but it was a disrespect to my dad. After further conversations with the funeral home and a phone call from Chattanooga's National Cemetery staff, James's father was respectfully buried among the brave men and women who sacrificed their lives to serve their country an intimate moment the family will cherish forever. It relieves me, but it still broke my heart that my dad had to lay in there and have to probably go through that if nothing was done. That was Tanisha Cordell reporting. The managing director at Heritage Funeral Home explained to us off camera that usually when a family is unable to pay for the services up front, they're directed to local organizations for financial support. We were looking for more answers about the funeral home's policies, but have not yet heard back. And we want to make a correction on a previous story. Governor Haslam signed the abortion bill into law. The bill states a woman cannot get an abortion after 20 weeks if a doctor determines the fetus is viable through required tests. Now let's head back over to Paul Bear's a big weekend on tap with, as he says, Mama's Day. Tell Mama's us about Day. Mama's Day, Paul. Right, Mama's Day is looking good. Even Saturday is looking pretty good. We're going to see a drier Saturday. We're going to start off with some clouds and we're going to see some clearing. Uh, Sunday is just going to be a super day and uh, looks like it's going to be very, very warm uh, coming up for next week. Now there are a few sprinkles right around our viewing area, but the bulk of the heavy rain right now is just north of Birmingham or approaching Birmingham, uh, south of Huntsville. And I think this little cluster of storms is going to stay south of us, but it may clip some of our southern counties too. We'll have to watch that uh, later on tonight, but that should be getting out of here pretty fast. I think it's going to affect Atlanta more than it will affect us. Now it's 61 in Altamont, but it's 66 in Cleveland, 64 in Dalton, 68 in the city, and 61 out in Mercury. Uh, winds are out of the northeast at about five, so the winds aren't that strong. 80, 71, the high and the low, and just a little bit of rain fell at the airport, a little more in the trace. About four tenths fell in Barnell, three tenths Lafayette, three tenths Dalton, a tenth out in your Calhoun. Chatsworth had about two tenths, Blue Ridge about a tenth, and about a tenth out in your uh, Scottsboro too. Now North Chattanooga, right here at Channel 3, we had a tenth. Uh, Lookout Mountain had three tenths, East Ridge four tenths, Ulawa and Collegedale 1.1 inches of rain today, about four tenths out in Cleveland, four tenths in Ringgold, so that was quite a bit. But the heaviest rain fell out near Riceville up to two inches. Southern half of uh, Athens had about 1.6, while the northern half had about eight tenths. Ten Mile had two tenths, three tenths out near Etowah, and Dayton had about a tenth, Spring City a tenth, and Pikeville about a tenth of an inch. Vipercast is showing the system that's bringing all the rain. See that area in yellow? That's the stuff that's just to the west of Birmingham now. That's going to stay to the south of us. We're going to see some clouds in the morning, but by afternoon we'll see clearing, and the sun should be coming back. It should be a clear night for tomorrow night. Uh, and again, Mama's Day is looking good. All the clouds are going to be off to the north, a miserable day up in the northeast. With high pressure building for us, we're looking at a great day on Monday, and then it really starts to warm up into Tuesday and Wednesday as that high pressure drifts down towards the south and the east, lets the southerly flow of air come right in, and we could see a few more clouds coming in too. 61 tonight with uh, some scattered showers, but nothing heavy. Tomorrow, 76 with some clearing. It'll be breezy with northerly winds 10 to 15. 55 tomorrow night with clear skies and a light northerly wind. And the Channel 3 Storm Alert 7-day forecast. Again, beautiful. 76. Mother's Day is looking good. 84 for the high. Monday we warm up, humidity still fairly low at 88, but then the humidity starts to go up into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and even into Friday. You see those lows in the mid-60s. When you see lows in the mid-60s, you start to feel the humidity, and we may get some isolated and widely scattered showers by Friday. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul. Okay. Sounds like a great weekend, though. Yes, Thank you. Yeah.
A construction project may improve a local highway. But many people say it's messing up their cars. Highway 27 is currently undergoing some repairs. Some people are saying loose gravel from the construction is damaging the vehicles. Many drivers have reported chipped paint and damaged windshields. A spokesperson with Wright Brothers Contracting told us they are in the process of milling the old pavement, replacing the asphalt. Work began the project about a week ago, told it should be finished by the end of the week. If your car is damaged, you can file a claim with TDOT. There's contact information for that on our website. And if you plan to travel I-24 toward Nashville this weekend, you may see some delays. Crews have begun the next phase of a major road project on the interstate. Thursday night, they began shifting traffic to get ready for the big move. They'll remove the existing bridge and install the new one this weekend. It could cause delays for Mother's Day weekend, and it's also going to be a headache for a convenience store across the bridge because without that bridge, drivers won't be able to reach the store. Traffic is not coming, so we has to be closed, you know. We close, we open, maybe late, we try. If he's a little bit busy, so we can keep it open, otherwise we have to uh, close, you know. Officials say be sure to slow down in the construction zone and look for detours in advance. We posted six ways to get around that construction on our website, WRCVTV.com. How about some good news, though? If you travel to or from Atlanta, breathe a sigh of relief. Put this picture out of your head because after more than 40 days, the northbound lanes on I-85 have finally been reopened to traffic just in time for Mother's Day weekend. Crews worked round the clock since the collapse to remove debris and reconstruct 700 feet of new bridge. The southbound lanes are expected to be reopened by Sunday. That's excellent news. That is. Coming up next in sports, one former mock got his first taste of the NFL today. Paul Shaheen has more from the Titans rookie camp. Plus, former Vols quarterback Josh Dobbs went from the stage to the gridiron all within 24 hours. That story and more sports is next.
As of today, Corey Levin is officially a Tennessee Titan. The former UTC All-American reported to the Titans rookie minicamp this afternoon, right after he inked his very first NFL contract. Our very own sports director Paul Shaheen made the trip over to Nashville and caught up with the former mock after his first day. Welcome back to Nashville. We are inside the Tennessee Titans practice locker room. Sitting beside me, a special guest, Corey Levin, former UTC All-American. Corey, thanks for the time. Day one of Tennessee Titans rookie minicamp in the books and some good news to start the day. You officially signed on the dotted line, one of four draft picks to sign. What was that like? Uh, it was great. You know, just being able to finally know I'm, I'm here and, and ready to put in some work. So, uh, you know, all that, all that time, unknown, training, just kind of not knowing where you're going and it's finally paying off so day one complete in the books for the most part your head on a swivel at all or do you have your feet under you um at first you know you're kind of head on a swivel you know making sure you're not messing up so you're kind of tentative but after the walkthrough we had this morning you know the second practice was a lot better and I was able to move around faster and and kind of get some uh, get some better reps under my belt so obviously you told me before there's a little bit of an install for the team Mike Malarkey head coach talked about that as well there's also some rules for Corey to follow one of which is uh, an iPad I believe tell me about this uh, we get an iPad that is issued to us with our playbook on it, and if we uh, lose or break that it's I think it's twelve thousand five hundred dollars so precisely yeah don't want to lose that the Tennessee Titans O-line from 2015 to 2016 I do not believe a line in football made a better jump bottom five to top five in 2016 definitely you know they got pro bowlers all over that line it definitely at the tackles um, inside guys Ben Jones and, and Quentin Spain you know they're hell of players um, you know, it's going to be great to, to get in with them, get in a meeting room with them and, and work out with them and just learn from the, one of the best lines in the NFL, like you said. It's going to be awesome, and I can't wait. He's not a Chattanooga native, but he is certainly one of Chattanooga's finest. Thank you so much for your time, Corey Levin. Enjoy the rest of rookie minicamp with the Tennessee Titans. Now, that wraps up on Sunday. OTA start the following Monday for Corey Levin, a former UTC All-American. In Nashville, Tennessee, I'm Paul Shaheen, Channel 3. Eyewitness Sports. Former Vols quarterback Josh Dobbs has been known to be an overachiever both on and off the field, but now he's taken it to a whole nother level. Last night, Dobbs walked across the stage in Thompson Bowling Arena, officially graduating from the University of Tennessee. But then get this, he went straight from Knoxville to Pittsburgh just in time for the Steelers rookie mini camp today. Talk about a quick turnaround for the NFL newbie, but let's be honest, tired has never been a part of Josh's vocabulary. He didn't sleep last night, of course, of course. I got some sleep when we got in just enough and was able to come in ready to go today. Good to get out on the field, just come out and compete. So of course, good to have a familiar face across the ball with Cam out here. So um, it was a quick transition, you know, had graduation last night, flew in last night on the field this morning so it was good though to get on the field and get into it. Speaking of Tennessee quarterbacks, the Vols picked up a huge commitment today. One of their top quarterback targets in the 2018 class, Adrian Martinez, tweeted out just hours ago that he is officially committed to the Tennessee Volunteers. The Fresno, California native had originally committed to Cal, but reopened his recruitment after a coaching change. Martinez is a four-star recruit and is ranked as the number seven dual threat quarterback in the 24-7 sports composite for the 2018 class. On the ice, the Nashville Predators are two periods into their first ever Western Conference Final, but they'll need one more goal to win their first ever game in the Western Conference Final. Preds and Ducks currently are tied 2-2. Two two. Preds actually led 2-1 going into this third period, but Ducks just got on the board, so we're tied 2-2. Ducks drew first blood in this one, but Preds answered with two goals, one from Philip Forsberg and another by Austin Watson. Again, this game still going on just about at the 10 minute mark. Game two will be in Anaheim on Sunday. And lastly, over on the baseball diamond, the Braves snapped their six game losing streak tonight with a big win over the Marlins. 
It might have been some of that Miami heat that weared off on the Braves because they got hot and stayed hot. Two runs in the second and a six run rally in the seventh. Tyler Flowers drove in four runs, including that solo home run to start the scoring. Braves pitcher Mike Fultonewicz picked up his first win of the season, allowing just one run in six innings. Eight to four that final, the two teams will meet again tomorrow night, 7-10, first pitch. All right, that's it for sports. One last look at your weather. I was going to say the Braves are in a trip to the beach. Their game's not until tomorrow yeah. night. They could just go over there and sun. Why not? The yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And we'll check in with Paul when we come back. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good shower right now near Chickamauga, Georgia, and it's moving off towards the east. So uh, out near Chickamauga and uh, probably later on, maybe towards Ringgold, you might see a shower, a pretty heavy shower tonight. But by tomorrow morning, we'll just see some clouds, and then by noon, the clouds start to break up, and temperatures will be climbing into the mid-70s. So the seven-day forecast has 76 tomorrow, Mother's Day 84, and then heat and humidity start to build up for next week. Okay. Warm is good. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Well, strange things happen in Texas. For example, this family just sat themselves down for dinner when an uninvited guest burst through the front door of their home. Yeah, and he doesn't get traction. A oh deer bolted through the glass <laughs> no. into the foyer, startling the family and the dog. And oh my God. Some stumbled around just a little bit. The deer did manage to make its way back to the front door and got out. The homeowner said they've never seen a deer in their neighborhood <laughs> in the 13 years they've lived there. And he was in his house, in their house. Oh they God. finally were Dude, able to take him to safety. Huh? <laughs>
sock. D1 through D5, finish with the Josh dog sock, please. As of Friday afternoon, Corey Levin is officially a Tennessee Titan. The former UTC All-American reported to the Titans rookie minicamp yesterday, right after he inked his very first NFL contract. Our very own sports director, Paul Shaheen, made the